Let me talk about the seven-year-old choke real quick, okay? So this was a choke, like I've been teaching jiu-jitsu for a long time and I've taught at all kinds of different places. And I used to teach kids classes. I stopped doing it because court orders, whatever. But, <laughs> um, but I used to teach this kids class and uh, I was like a black belt, but I still had a lot to learn about how to work with children and how to keep a room organized and how to keep kids focused. I had very uneducated on that. So I'm sitting here like this, trying to coach these two little kids into something they don't want to do. I'm like, you do that, oh, I don't want to be here, you fucker. And it was, at a, uh, it was at a Las Vegas athletic center, athletic club, where parents were coming to get their exercise, and they're like, oh, what am I gonna do with my kid for an hour while I exercise? Put him in this jujitsu class. None of the kids asked to be here, is the point I'm trying to make. A lot of kids' classes, the kids are like, wanna sign up to the kids' class. This one, they were being babysat, so it was me babysitting. So anyway, there was this one kid, can you sit right here? Like I'm doing, like on my knees, right? And you're just gonna pretend to be. And I'm sitting here and I'm talking to these two little kids and, and I don't know that behind me, this little punk kid is walking around, like, tearing things off the wall and shit. And, like, and he goes, oh, what's up with this guy? And he <laughs> just walking like this. He jumped on my shoulders. Keep in mind, I mean, I'm, I didn't want to do it too because we're the same size. But this is a seven year old kid. This is a seven year old kid. So you know how seven-year-olds will jump and sit on your shoulders and they want you to like carry them around, you know? He jumped on my shoulders, like, ah, and then, and then just, again. He, so keep in mind, his little legs were like dangling right here, right? I'm just gonna put my nose back here. And, and what happened is, he locked his little hand, his little hands right here under my chin, and just started, ah! And I'm under here like, okay, don't kill this kid. I wanna fucking, like, you know, I'm like, don't kill this kid. How do I get out of this without killing this kid? Because everything in me was like, slam him on his head. Slam him backwards, you know? So, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, ah, oh, and I end up falling back. So look at, come here. Come here, put your, uh, sit on your butt. So I end up in this spot with this kid like this. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm starting to go unconscious. I'm like, because the kid, by the way, he, this is how natural jujitsu is for kids, by the way. Right? He's, he's tapping, he, he hasn't taken enough jujitsu classes to know what this means yet. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, dude, you got it. And he's just, ah, squeezing on me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to get choked unconscious by a seven year old in front of my class. I have no control. It was an interesting situation. So let me show you the solution. Let me show you the solution I did to get out of his little, I grabbed his little seven year old finger <laughs> and I bent the shit out of that little seven year old finger until he let go. So, Lesson was learned. A lesson was learned right there. A few lessons. One, I need to keep, keep better track of what's going on in my classes, right? I can't be so focused on one thing at a time. Two, yo, that choke works. <laughs> a seven-year-old, I couldn't get, like, I couldn't, like, use uh, legal ways to get out. I had to cheat and bend his little finger, right? I was like, okay, if a seven-year-old can throw that on me and I have to cheat to get out, what if I do this to other men my size? I'm gonna jack him up with that. And ever since then, I've been hitting that and I call it the seven-year-old choke because I remember the little punk's name, but I don't wanna give him credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> so he was seven, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, so it's the seven-year-old choke. And I find the seven-year-old choke all the time. And deep half guard is one of the places I find it when I'm on top, when somebody tries to deep half guard me. So the whole moral of this story is don't get seven-year-olded, seven-year-olded choked when you're in deep half guard. Can you lay down here for me? Yeah, put your head here, yeah. So if I'm in deep half guard, right? If I can go lock, fall back, my legs are up on the shoulders, it's a seven-year-old choke, right? And this right here will get somebody's tap. Okay, it's a good addition to your rear naked choke. Let me have your back. If I have somebody's back, okay, and for whatever reason, I can't rear naked choke, maybe he's holding both. I'll back it up to here, and then climb, 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 climb. Now, He's in a bad spot, son. It's already starting to choke him. We're not squeezing. I'll even throw a triangle on for extra power. Oh, we're tapping out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how cool is that? That a guy who was, at the time, a second degree black belt learned a new choke from some kid who doesn't even know what tap out means. How beautiful is that? Right? I mean, it's kind of weird. And it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but I'm not so embarrassed of something that I can't take a lesson from it. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and, and man, what a good lesson it was, dude, because I've won gold medals because of that choke. I've tapped a lot of guys that I couldn't tap with normal rear naked chokes and arm bars with that. I threw that seven-year-old on them. They've never seen it before. They've never seen it before, so they didn't have uh, a way to escape it, right? Or 
preventive measures. They didn't have preventive measures yet. So for like three, four years, I was tapping all my guys with this. Anybody who was my student was like, oh, not the seven-year-old again. Every time, it was all I did for like the days. All I would ever do was try to find seven-year-old jokes. So I went off on a tangent. Okay, ask me. So, so you, you earned gold medals off that choke, but you can't give him credit for that? I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember his name, I just I don't want to do it. <laughs> Everything in me is like, no, <laughs> be a player hater. <laughs> so, you can learn jiu-jitsu from anywhere, anybody. You don't have to have somebody with more stripes on their belt than you to learn a lesson from them, right? They don't have to be Marcelo Garcia or Barry Tonin or me to learn a lesson from them, right? You can learn a lesson from a little kid who doesn't even know what he's doing. Lessons come in all shapes and forms in jiu-jitsu. That's the point I'm trying to make with that. And also I was trying to make, don't, you know, 